Now I am going to give the detailed proof of this theorem. Our goal is to show that there exists some C in the closed interval from A to B such that f of C is the smallest function value on the interval AB. Okay? And there exists some D in this interval such that f of D is the largest function value on the interval AB. So I only focus on the case where um, there exists some C in the closed interval AB such that f of C is the smallest function value and leave the second one as an exercise. Okay, so with that, we are going to focus on the range of the function within the interval from A to B. So in the first step, we define the set A as again the range of the function in the interval AB. So A is just F of AB, meaning that A is the set of all possible outputs where the inputs are in the closed interval from A to B. And now, in the first step, we will show that A is a bounded set in R. Okay? How can we show that A is a bounded set in R? We are going to use um, the contradiction method by assuming that A is not bounded. Okay? So, um, we are going to focus on the range of the function, meaning that the set A of all possible outputs where the inputs are in the interval from A to B. Okay? So, um, consider the set A defined as A equals the set of all f of x where x runs in the um, closed interval from A to B. In the first step, we are going to show that A is a bounded set, okay? A is actually a bounded subset of the real line, okay? So, uh, by contradiction, suppose that A is not about it. Okay? What does it mean by A is about it? And what does it mean by A is not about it? Okay? A subset A of the real line is about it if there exists some real number M greater than or equal to zero such that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to M for all A in the set A. Okay, we can see that A is bounded both from um, above and below. Okay, so the set A is not bounded if and only if for all M greater than or equal to zero, there exists some A in the set A such that this is not true, meaning that the absolute value of A is strictly less, greater than M. Okay. So, by taking the negation of this statement, we know that um, a set A is not about it if and only if this is true, okay? And in this proof, we are going to apply this statement for different values of um, capital M, say M equals 1, M equals 2, M equals 3, and so on, okay? So now, by contradiction, suppose that A is not bounded, okay? So then, for any positive integer n, we can find some a sub n in the set a such that 
The absolute value of a sub n is strictly greater than n. Okay. Now, because a sub n is in the set A, it is in this set. That means each a n is a possible input, I'm sorry, a possible output where the corresponding input is in the closed interval from A to B. So then, so for any n in n, there exists xn in the closed interval from A to B such that An is equal to f of xn. Okay. And so, by um, this condition, the absolute value of f of xn must be greater than n. Okay. At this point, we see that for any positive integer n, there exists some xn in the closed interval from A to B such that the absolute value of f of xn is strictly greater than n. To continue the proof, we are going to apply the Bonjano virus theorem. This theorem says that if xn is a bounded sequence of real numbers, then it has a convergent subsequence. Okay, so now here for any positive integer n, we can find some xn in the closed interval from A to B such that this is true. Then xn is greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to B for every n. And so xn is a bounded sequence. Okay, now since xn is a bounded sequence. It has a subsequence x and k not converges. Um, to some element um, x bar and we can see that x bar is in the um, closed interval from A to B as well. This is true because um, x sub n is always greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to B for every n and so x and k is greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b for every um, k. And this one converges to x bar and by the comparison theorem, x bar has to be um, greater than or equal to a and uh, less than or equal to b. So x bar is an element of the closed interval from a to b. Okay, so we have this estimate The absolute value of f of x and k is always greater than n sub k, and this is true for all k in n. Okay. Now, by the continuity of f, We see that f of x and k converges to f of x bar as k approaches infinity. The reason is because x and k here converges to x bar. So f of x and k converges to f of x bar again by the continuity of the function f. Okay? So so the absolute value of f of x and k 
converted to the absolute value of f of x bar, um, which is a real number as k approaches infinity. Now, from this condition here, note that um, n k here approaches infinity as k approaches infinity because um, we always see that um, we can easily show that by, con by uh, induction that n sub k is always greater than or equal to k for all k. Um, why? Because n sub 1 is strictly less than n sub 2 and is strictly less than n sub 3 and so on. And this is a sequence of uh, positive integers. Okay. So now, from this condition here, we uh, have that um, limb of f of x and k as k approaches infinity is infinity by the comparison theorem because nk here approaches infinity as k approaches infinity and therefore we get a contradiction. Okay, So um, I can say we also have that This is a contradiction. This contradiction shows us that f is bounded on the closed interval from A to B, or the set A defined earlier is a bounded set. In the first step, we already show that the set A is bounded. So it is both bounded below and above. And A is in fact the range of the function on the closed interval from A to B. Then it is always non-empty. Um, for, for example, F of A is always in the set A. So um, we can uh, apply the completeness axiom to continue with the second step of the proof. Okay, so um, let alpha be the infimum of the set A. Okay, so this is alpha in this figure, this is alpha. And again, by the completeness axiom, because A is bounded below and non empty, so alpha is a real number. So I want to recall a very important property of um, this number alpha. Because alpha is the infimum of the set A, we can find a sequence in A not converted to alpha. So um, you can watch my video lectures on the supremum and the infimum to understand more about this property. So I can say that then there exists a sequence alpha in the set A such that the limit of alpha n as n approaches infinity is equal to this number alpha, okay? And again, similar to the first step, because each alpha n is a possible output, we can find a um, corresponding input in the closed interval from A to B. So, for any n, in the set of all natural numbers, we can find some g sub n in the closed interval from A to B such that f of 
un is equal to alpha n. Okay. Now we will apply the Bonzano virus theorem again. Note that un is always greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b for all n. So un is a bounded sequence. So it has a convergent subsequence. So then un has a subsequence denoted by un okay? such that the un k converges to some c in the um, close interval from a to b okay so we can um, we already saw this property before and again at this point um, we uh, apply the continuity of f okay so since the f is continuous From here, we see that f of u and k converges to f of c, f of c, as k goes to infinity. Okay. And at the same time, f of u and k here is f of u and k is alpha and k. Alpha n is f of u n. So f of u and k is alpha and k, and alpha and k is a subsequence of alpha n. Since alpha n converges to alpha, alpha and k converges to alpha as well, because every subsequence of a convergent sequence converges to the same limit. Okay, so now alpha and k converges to alpha, and here we see that alpha and k converges to f of c. And by the uniqueness of the limit of a sequence, alpha is equal to f of c. Okay? So, alpha is equal to f of c. And remember that alpha is the infimum of the set A. So, alpha is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the interval A, B. So, from here, we see that alpha is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the closed interval from A to B. So, we have found some c in the, the closed interval from a to b such that f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the closed interval from a to b and uh, we have completed the proof okay so over here again i want to emphasize a very important fact that alpha here is the infimum of a so it is a lower bound of the set a so alpha is less than or equal to um, um, every element of, of the set A. That means alpha is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the closed interval from A to B. Okay, so um, the proof is complete.